As you are seeing that we will discuss today generalized coordinates in classical mechanics. I hope the previous lecture regarding the degrees of freedom of a dynamical system you have definitely watched and if you have watched that video I have a deep faith that the today's lecture will be very easier, very convenient to understand all of you. Because if you know degrees of freedom of a system, then definitely it means you know 50% idea of generalized coordinates. Coordinates all of you are acquainted from coordinates but here is a word generalized it means it is something different but not very different but something different as we have studied in the concept of degrees of freedom that when we describe the configuration or we describe the motion of a dynamical system we need some independent variables and we always try to find the minimum number of independent variables to describe the configuration of the system and that minimum number is known as degrees of freedom of the system and here you can say all those independent variables which are needed to describe the configuration of the system are in fact generalized coordinates. If there, is, there are f degrees of freedom of a system, definitely you will need f independent variables to describe the configuration of the system and those f independent variables are simply generalized coordinates. So, in a short version, I just write down for your convenience the definition of generalized coordinate. You have understand everything. To describe to describe the configuration. to describe the configuration of a system to describe the configuration of a system we select select the minimum possible minimum possible number of independent variables independent variables in fact these independent variables which we select to describe the configuration of the system are known as generalized coordinates of the system these variables are known as generalized
generalized coordinates of the system. of the system remember as we have studied in case of degrees of freedom if f equal to degrees of freedom degrees of freedom of a system then we need f independent F independent variables to describe the configuration configuration of the system of the system if f is degree of freedom we must have at least f independent variables to describe the configuration of the system and those f independent variables will be called generalized coordinates regarding generalized coordinates we should note that in general we use the cartesian coordinates as generalized coordinates in most of the problems cartesian coordinates cartesian coordinates are mostly used mostly used as generalized coordinates but remember it is not a compulsion that we always have cartesian coordinates to use as a generalized coordinates in fact what system of coordinates we will use it depends on the nature of the problem on our convenience in most of in in several problems the cartesian coordinates are not convenient to deal with the configuration of the system and if cartesian coordinates are not convenient as, as a generalized coordinates to describe the configuration of the system in that condition we consider another set of coordinates as generalized coordinates this may be angle this may be angles it means you can say that generalized coordinates do not need always the, to have dimension of length as you know 
x, y, z, which are Cartesian coordinates, these have dimension of length. But as generalized coordinates may not be x, y, z, so it is not necessary that the dimension of generalized coordinate should be always length. If it is angle, then it is dimensionless. So dimension, dimension of generalized coordinate do not need to be always the dimension of length. In fact, here we should remember, we can take a different set of coordinates in accordance with the convenience of the dynamical problem as generalized coordinates. You can take you can take angular momentum angular momentum or even linear momentum simply you may write momentum electric charge etc as generalized coordinates as generalized coordinates as in the first introductory lecture lecture of classical mechanics i have told you that the limitation of newtonian mechanics was that it cannot solve the electrical problems but here in lagrangian formulation where we will use the concept of generalized coordinates you will see that by when we take electric charge as generalized coordinates in that case we can solve the electrical problems by using the dynamical equation of Lagrange. So generalized coordinates has a more vivid field and uh, so many quantities in accordance with the convenience we can select in spite of x, y, z that is Cartesian coordinate as generalized coordinates. And another important example is amplitudes in Fourier series expansion. Amplitudes Amplitudes in Fourier series expansion. I hope you have studied Fourier series and in that Fourier series the amplitudes a1, a2, so on, an, even a0 expansion. Amplitudes in Fourier series expansion may be used as generalized coordinates generalized coordinates I hope now one of the important fact has been clear to you that generalized coordinates are not limited to Cartesian coordinates x, y, z. But in accordance with the convenience of the problem, we select other coordinates which may be uh, different quantities used in physics as generalized coordinates. We have, uh, I have given some example like momentum, angular momentum, even the quantities having dimension of energy, expansion, 
एम्पलीट्यूड्स इन फोरियर सीरीज एक्सपेंशन ई टी सी इलेक्ट्रिक चार्ज दीज मे बी टेकन एज जनरलाइज कॉर्डिनेट्स ऑल दो इन मोस्ट ऑफ द डायनामिकल प्रॉब्लम द जनरलाइज कॉर्डिनेट्स कॉन्सिस्ट ऑफ एक्स वाई जेड और आर थीटा एंड फाइव मोस्ट इन मोस्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम मोस्ट इन मोस्ट ऑफ डायनामिकल प्रॉब्लम्स इन मोस्ट ऑफ डायनामिकल प्रॉब्लम्स जनरलाइज कॉर्डिनेट्स आर यूज एज एक्स वाई जेड आर थीटा फाइव साय दीज आर इनफैक्ट थीटा फाइव एंड साय आर डिफरेंट एंगल्स इट इज बट दिस इज नॉट नेसेसरी एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू इवन यू कैन टेक इलेक्ट्रिक चार्ज एज जनरलाइज कॉर्डिनेट्स नाउ वन थिंग हेयर इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड when ever we select coordinates we at first select an origin and v and coordinate axis and with respect to that origin we define coordinates of a point normally the coordinate axis are orthogonal to one another and those variables are known as orthogonal independent variables but in selection of generalized coordinates it is not necessary it is not essential that we have to select all the generalized coordinates with respect to the same origin it is not necessary to clear this point i will give you two examples although those two examples will be clear when we will study classical mechanics in fourth coming lectures and uh, one of the examples will be from quantum mechanics uh, and we will encounter such situation in quantum mechanics but for just an information i am giving two examples to clear the fact that the generalized coordinates do not need to be with respect to the same origin this is a very remarkable fact you may take generalized coordinates generalized coordinates do not need to be with respect to the same origin same origin i would like to clear this point by take by giving you two examples and as i have told you those examples will be very clear to you when the fourth coming lectures on this classical mechanics series of myself will come first example is motion of a rigid body motion of a rigid body as i have told earlier when you say rigid body what does it mean a rigid body means a body in case of which the distance between any two particles or any two points does not change during its motion any type of motion either translation or rotation or a combination of translation or rotation the distance between the two points remains fixed such a body is called rigid body whenever we discuss the kinematics of a rigid body and its dynamics 
in that condition in fact we take two sets of coordinates relative to two different origins as generalized coordinates first of all we select an origin outside of the rigid body let us say this is x y z x h and origin o at first in dealing with the kinematics and dynamics of a rigid body at first we define the coordinates of center of mass of the body with respect to an external origin as you see in this figure o is an external origin that is origin outside of the rigid body shown in the figure and here is its center of mass at first relative to this origin we define the three coordinates of the cm three coordinates of the cm three coordinates mean three cartesian coordinates three cartesian coordinates of cm relative to to an external origin external origin let us say this external with respect to this external origin the cartesian coordinates of this center of mass is let us say this these are x y and z you may select x cm y cm z cm so these coordinates of center of mass has have been defined relative to an origin o which is outside of the body and after that we select three angles of rotation with respect to the cm in succession those angles are denoted by the symbol phi theta and psi the first of all three cartesian coordinates of cm relative to an external origin which are denoted by x y z and again relative to relative to cm we define three angles of rotation denoted by phi theta and psi in fact these angles are called euler's angles euler's angles euler's angles so in case of the dynamics and kinematics of a rigid body the generalized coordinates are what are the generalized coordinates the generalized coordinates are x y z and phi theta psi in fact here x y z 
आर डिफाइंड विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एक्सटर्नल ओरिजिन एंड दीज फाइव थेटा एंड विच आर कॉल्ड यूलर्स एंगल दीज आर डिफा दीज आर इनफैक्ट थ्री एंगल ऑफ सक्सेसिव रोटेशंस एंड दीज आर डिफाइंड विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू सी एम तो दीज आर डिफाइंड विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एक्सटर्नल origin and these are defined with respect to cm so i hope now it has been clear to you that generalized coordinates do not need to be defined with respect to the same origin origin to define the generalized coordinates may be different as in the case of a motion of rigid body there are two origins different origins and with respect to those ori origins we have defined the set of generalized coordinates for a rigid body and uh, now another example as i have told i will give you uh, two examples this example will you you will encounter during the study of quantum mechanics when we study hydrogen molecule hydrogen molecule hydrogen molecule a study of hydrogen molecule quantum mechanically quantum mechanically then then there is again the set of variables used as generalized coordinates are not defined with respect to the same origin let us consider this is our hydrogen molecule that is h2 just like rigid body here we select an external origin and with respect to this external origin again the three cartesian coordinate of the cm of the molecule are defined and again with respect to the cm here we define two angle of rotation and those angle of rotations are denoted by the symbol phi and psi in fact these angles are defined with respect to the two mutually perpendicular axes whose origin lies at the center of mass of the molecule so in this case there are a first set of coordinates x y z and these are coordinates of cm of h2 molecule with respect to what where is the origin with respect to external origin external origin and second set of coordinates are phi and psi and in these phi and psi are the angles angles of rotation angles of rotation about two mutually perpendicular axes two mutually perpendicular axes through the center through the 
you can say center or center of mass because center or center of mass of the molecule will lie at same point so just like in a rigid body in this case we have the set of generalized coordinates in case of hydrogen molecule as x x y z phi and psi again this is with respect to external origin external origin and these are with respect to center and two mutually perpendicular axes so i hope now it is it will have very clear to you that the generalized coordinates do not need to be defined with respect to the same origin it may be it it may be defined with respect to different origins and so the word generalized is most appropriate because here there is no restriction what i have told till now i have just brief it if a system has f degree of freedom you need f independent variables and those f independent variables are called generalized coordinates these generalized coordinates do do not uh, are not always cartesian coordinates in accordance with the convenience of the problem this set of coordinates may be other than cartesian coordinates and finally we have told you that the generalized coordinates do not need to be with respect to the same origin now how generalized coordinates will be denoted it's a denote how i denote the generalized coordinates so notation of generalized coordinates notation of generalized coordinates in most of the text generalized coordinates are denoted by the letter q with numerical subscript you may say qk where k runs from 1 to f 1 to f where what is f you know it is degree of freedom as i have told you before if f is the degree of freedom of our system the number of generalized coordinates will be f and so these f coordinates will be denoted by q1 q2 q3 and up to qf so generalized coordinates are denoted as q1 q2 q3 and so on qf where f represents the degree of freedom of the system always remember number of generalized coordinates will be always equal to degree of freedom of our system now i want to give some example to understand the idea of generalized coordinates in particular in some particular cases what will be the convenient uh, set of generalized coordinates and uh, i will give you three simple examples first of all we take example for 
मोशन ऑफ ए पार्टिकल इन ए प्लेन मोशन ऑफ ए पार्टिकल इन ए प्लेन मोशन ऑफ ए पार्टिकल इन ए प्लेन लेट एस सपोज अ पार्टिकल इज मूविंग इन एक्स वाई प्लेन वी हेयर टेक टू कार्टिशियन कॉर्डिनेट एक्सेज एक्स एंड वाई एंड द प्लेन फॉर्म बाय दिज एक्सेज इज एक्स वाई प्लेन एंड ए पार्टिकल इज मूविंग इन दिस प्लेन इफ एट एनी टाइम टी द पार्टिकल इज लोकेटेड If at any time t the particle is located at a point say p, then we assign two Cartesian coordinates to the position of the particles, and those are x and y. You better know what are x and y. In according to this figure, this O A is x and O B is y, and so this P A will be also y. Let us take O P equals to R, and this angle is theta. It means the position vector of the particle. Makes an angle theta with the positive sense of our x-axis. You know, we can define polar coordinates, plane polar coordinates, r theta of this point two. So, if motion will of a particle will be described in x-y plane, there will be two sets of generalized coordinates. One will be Cartesian coordinate that is x y. It is also most convenient in so many cases. Just like you have studied in lower classes, circular motion, projectile motion. In those problems, we in that always use Cartesian coordinate as generalized coordinate to describe the motion of the system. And at the same time, in some of the cases, in some of the particular dynamical problem. the plane polar coordinate r theta as generalized coordinates in this case are more convenient with respect to the cartesian coordinate i will clarify that so in this case there are two sets of generalized coordinates what is the first set first set is x y which are Cartesian coordinates. Cartesian coordinates. And another set of generalized coordinates are r theta and r theta. These are plane polar coordinates. plane polar coordinates as i have told you in accordance with the convenience of the problem we may select these two sets of coordinates as generalized coordinates so in first case in some of the problems we will have q1 equal to x and q2 equal to y q1 first generalized coordinate and q2 is second generalized coordinate and in another set of coordinate when you take plane polar coordinates as generalized coordinate then q1 will be r and q2 will be theta Q two will be theta. I hope 
यू हैव स्टडीड मोशन ऑफ ए पार्टिकल इन ए प्लेन फॉर एग्जाम्पल हम एज आई हैव टोल्ड प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन इन लोअर क्लासेस एंड डेफिनेटली यू हैव यूज द कॉर्डिनेट एक्स एंड वाई इन डीलिंग विथ द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन सो दिस इज ए ड्यूरिंग प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन मोशन टेक्स प्लेस इन ए वर्टिकल प्लेन इट इज ए इट इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ मोशन इन ए प्लेन एंड इन दिस केस X and Y are convenient. Convenient set of generalized coordinates. Generalized coordinates. but when we deal motion in a plane under a central force motion under a central force motion under a central force whenever motion takes place under a central force definitely motion takes place in a plane always this is an ex example of motion in a plane motion in a plane but in this case the selection of cartesian coordinate x and y to deal with the problems of of motion under central force is not convenient but instead of x and y if we use r and theta as generalized coordinates we feel convenience the use of r and theta these will be convenient in dealing with the motion of a particle moving under a central force which is an example of motion in a plane so in this case we choose the first generalized coordinate q1 as r and the second generalized coordinate q2 as theta here yeah, remember motion when motion takes place in a plane but the trajectory is not fixed not specified then you needed two independent variables x and y or r and theta and you see that the number of generalized coordinates are same as the degree of freedom of the system in these two examples degree of freedom of the system or particle is 2 and so we have two set two generalized coordinates now i would like to give you an another important example uh, regarding the generalized coordinates in case of A spherical symmetry. There are so many dynamical problems where a spherical symmetry is involved. A spherical symmetry is involved. Problems of problems involving, not of problems involving. spherical symmetry spherical symmetry if the problems in has spherical symmetry then the use of cartesian coordinates x y z are not convenient in this case x y z not suitable set of 
जेनरेलाइड कोऑर्डिनेट्स इफ द प्रॉब्लम इन्वॉल्व्स स्फेरिकल सिमेट्री इन दैट वेरी कंडीशन द यूज ऑफ एक्स वाई जेड एज जेनरलाइज कोऑर्डिनेट्स इज नॉट सुटेबल और नॉट कन्वीनियंट इंस्टीड ऑफ एक्स वाई जेड वी यूज आर थेटा एंड फाइव विच आर कॉल्ड इनफैक्ट स्फेरिकल पोलर कोऑर्डिनेट्स ऑफ ए पॉइंट एज जेनरलाइज कोऑर्डिनेट्स आर थेटा फाइव आर सुटेबल सुटेबल सेट ऑफ जेनरेलाइज कोऑर्डिनेट्स सुटेबल सेट ऑफ जेनरेलाइज कोऑर्डिनेट्स If the problem involves spherical symmetry, remember the use of x, y, z will be not convenient for us to solving the dynamical problem. But instead of x, y, z, if we use r, theta, and phi, which are in fact spherical polar coordinates of the point, as generalized coordinates, the solution of problem will be more convenient. you may see in this uh, figure although the figure is drawn on a two dimensional plane but the situation is 3d so something will be not very clear let us consider p is a point and x y z are its cartesian coordinates and r theta phi r its spherical polar coordinates you know this is r if you draw a perpendicular pa to the xy plane and join o to this foot of perpendicular then this angle is phi and the radius vector or position vector of point p which makes angle theta with z these are r theta and z if the problem involves spherical symmetry i have told you this set of generalized coordinates will be more appropriate so in this case we must take q1 equal to r q2 equal to theta and q3 equal to phi this will be the most convenient form of generalized coordinates i would like to give some example Uh, which we will uh, study in uh, boundary value problem or in quantum mechanics for example if you are dealing with the problem of spherical spherically symmetric potential problems in quantum mechanics spherically symmetric potential spherically symmetric spherically symmetric potential in qm quantum mechanics in that condition the most convenient set of generalized coordinates will be what that will be r theta and phi not x y z for example 
when we study hydrogen atom hydrogen for example if we study h atom in quantum mechanics h atom in qm the potential involved in that problem is spherically symmetric and in this case we do not write the equation schrodinger's equation in cartesian coordinate but we write schrodinger's equation in a spherical polar coordinate that is r theta and phi because in that problem the convenient set of generalized coordinates are r theta and phi again in same a uh, branch of physics we deal with another problem that is problem of a rigid rotator in case of rigid rotator again x y are not convenient set of coordinates not used as generalized coordinates generalized coordinates instead of it we use in this case theta and phi as generalized coordinates here r remains constant so that is not treated as coordinate generalized coordinates so in this case we take q1 equal to in this case we take q1 equal to theta and q2 equal to phi these will be the most convenient generalized coordinates in case of a rigid rotator now i hope some idea regarding generalized coordinates and some its important examples have been clear to you now i would like to explain a a most important idea regarding this uh, thing which is transformation equation transformation equations i hope you know the meaning of transformation equation if you know an event in any reference frame or in any coordinate system and you have to know the same event in another coordinate system then there is a set of equations by the use of which we can describe the event we can find the coordinates of the same event in another frame and those equations which furnish this are known as transformation equation here we must remember that the variables of or the coordinates of a coordinate system of a point point in any coordinate system as we always say are independent variables when you say p is a point and in cartesian coordinates its coordinates are x y z it means these x y z are completely independent from one another it means you can't express x as a y plus b z 
you can't write it it means we cannot express x as a function of y and z we can't express it like that y do, does not depend on x and z z does not depend on x and y but if at the same time we define another set of coordinates in general let us say these are q1 q2 q3 these may be r theta phi these are the coordinates and in another coordinate system of the same point in that condition we can express q1 as a function of x y z q2 as a function of x y z q3 as a function of x y z and its converse is also true these cartesian coordinates can be expressed as a function of q1 q2 q3 and such expression which relates x with the coordinates of other system or the coordinate q1 of the other system with the cartesian coordinates x y z such equations are called transformation equations so in general we can express generalized coordinates as some function of cartesian coordinates and at the same time the cartesian coordinates as a function of generalized coordinates both are possible so let us take first in general you can say in general we can express we can express generalized coordinates we can express generalized coordinates as some functions some functions of some functions of some functions of cartesian coordinates cartesian coordinates some functions of cartesian coordinates and possibly possibly function of time function of time function of time in fact we can express generalized coordinates as a function of cartesian coordinates and function of time too in fact in most of the a problems of classical mechanics time exists as a parameter our generalized coordinate may explicitly depend on time or may not explicitly depend on time so to generalize the result here we are we will consider at first time also uh, regarding which we will talk in next section 
when time will come or when time will not come let us write it let us consider a system of particles and uh, this system consists of let us suppose n particles you know if the system is unconstant no constant has been imposed on this system in that condition what will be the degree of freedom of this system you know this will be simply 3n because each particle has 3 degree of freedom and number of particles is n so the total number of degree of freedom in absence of any constant imposed on the system will be 3n so n is equal to number of particles in a system number of particles in a system if if number 1 this is number 1 if the system is unconstrained if the system is unconstant that is no constant has been imposed on the system then what will be the degree of freedom you denote degree of freedom by, by f so f will be equal to 3n as you have studied previously the degree of freedom of a system consisting of n particles when no constant is imposed on the system is simply equal to 3n but you know if there be k constant imposed on this system if if k equal to number of constraints imposed on this system then as we have studied before in this condition the degree of freedom will be reduced by k and the effective number of degree of freedom of this system will be simply 3n minus k so if the system of n particle are unconstant no constant is imposed on it its degree of freedom is 3n and when k constants are imposed on it the degree of freedom is 3n minus k you can say in first case we will need 3n generalized coordinate to describe the configuration of the system and in second case that is when the k constants are imposed then we will require 3n minus k generalized coordinate to describe the configuration of the system so let us take these as in simple manner as i have told the first generalized coordinate q1 we may express this q1 as a function of what we may express it as a function of cartesian coordinates of the different particles of the system and at the same time it may be a function of time too so to generalize the result we also consider the time the coordinates are x1 y1 z1 so on xn yn zn and t q1 
q1 is expressed as a function of cartesian coordinates of the different particles of the system these are in fact cartesian coordinate of first particle that just like this here will be x2 y2 z2 and this is for nth particle and so again the second generalized coordinate q2 will be also expressed as q2 of x1 y1 z1 so on x n y n z n t and so on and what will be the last term as you have seen above if f is the degree of freedom of the system the number of generalized coordinates will be f and so the fth generalized coordinate will be denoted by qf and this qf will be equal to or qf will be expressed as a function of cartesian coordinates x1 y1 z1 so on xn yn zn t in this example f will be equal to 3n as you have seen above when f will be 3n in case of no constant no constant is imposed if the system is unconstant no constant is imposed on it then f will be equal to 3n but this f will be equal to 3n minus k when it will be when k constants are imposed when k constants k constants are imposed we can write this equation 1 in terms of a radius vector or position vector of the different particles you may take this is our first particle with position vector r1 this is second particle with position vector r2 and this is nth particle with position vector rn and x1 y1 z1 are cartesian coordinates of this point x2 y2 z2 are cartesian coordinate of this point and x n y n z n are cartesian coordinate of this point so in slightly brief the equation 1 may be written in terms of r1 r2 and r n equation 1 may be written as q1 equal to q1 of r1 r2 so on rn t q2 equal to q2 of r1 r2 so on rn of t and similarly qf equal to qf of r1 
R2 so on Rn of T there is no difference between equation 1 and 2 both are same thing only we have changed the parameters the scalar parameters x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 in instead of the vector parameters r1 r2 r3 and so on in brief these two equations may be written in very short form in brief in brief we may write qk equal to qk r i t this is the transformation equation in most compact form here k is for degree of freedom that is k runs from 1 2 3 and so on up to f and the subscript i this runs from 1 2 3 up to n where n represent the number of particles in fact this is transformation equation which furnishes a transformation of generalized coordinates we can find generalized coordinates if we know the cartesian coordinates in terms of cartesian coordinates we can find generalized coordinates using these equations either 1 or 2 or 3 the converse is also true equations equations 1 or 2 or 3 are used to find QK when R I are given. It means when Cartesian coordinates are given in that condition we can find the generalized coordinates by the use of these equations. As I have told you that converse is also possible. It means we can express the Cartesian coordinates as a function of generalized coordinates. Expressing 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 cartesian coordinates as a function of generalized coordinates and possibly time to generalize the result we take time also so just like it as we have seen ever 
वी कैन एक्सप्रेस कार्टिशियन कॉर्डिनेट एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ जनरलाइज कॉर्डिनेट एंड पॉसिबली टाइम वी मे राइट एक्स वन इक्वल टू एक्स वन ऑफ क्यू वन क्यू टू सो ऑन क्यू एफ एंड टी y1 वन इक्वल टू वाई वन ऑफ क्यू वन क्यू टू सो ऑन क्यू एफ एंड टी एंड सो ऑन फाइनली यू मे राइट जेड एन इक्वल टू जेड एन Q1, Q2, so on, Qf, T. Let us take this equation is four. This equation is four. Again, in brief, we can write this equation in a very compact form. In brief, in brief, equation four. is written as you may write it as r i equal to r i of q k t r i of q k t in fact this equation will be used to find the cartesian coordinates to find the cartesian coordinates of a point with respect to generalized coordinates if we know generalized coordinates we can find cartesian coordinate using this transformation equation but as we have we have seen that these transformation equations but are these transformation equations always valid definitely not there is a necessary and sufficient condition that these transformation from one set of coordinate to another set of coordinates will be effective will be valid it is not always valid so now we have to know what is the condition when these transformation transformations are valid and when these transformations are not valid it means when these transformations will be not valid the set of coordinates used in those transformation equations will be not a suitable set of generalized coordinates so the necessary condition for the transformation defined above to be the valid or effective transformation what is that condition 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 for validity of the transformation transformation defined in say equation 1 you may take any equation defined in 
ऑप्शन वन कंडीशन फॉर वैलिडिटी ऑफ द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन डिफाइंड इन इक्वेशन वन वट इज द नेसेसरी एंड सफिशियंट कंडीशन इनफैक्ट वी डिफाइन द कंडीशन विच इज नेसेसरी एंड सफिशियंट फॉर द वैलिडिटी ऑफ द ट्रांस दिज दिज ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ ए पर्टिकुलर डिटर्मिनाट विच इज कॉल्ड जेकोबियन डिटर्मिनाट फॉर योर कॉन्वेनियंस एट फर्स्ट वी राइट दी दिस फैक्ट then you will understand this very clearly the necessary the necessary and sufficient condition necessary and sufficient condition necessary and sufficient condition that the transformation that the transformation from a set of coordinates set of coordinates qk where you know k is equal to 1 2 so on up to f f is degree of freedom to the set to the set to the set x1 y1 so on zn x1 y1 z y1 so on zn is effective is effective is that is that the is that the jacobian jacobian determinant Jacobian determinant J. It is denoted by J. Jacobian determinant J of equations in one to be different. different from zero at all points different from zero at all points what i have told you in this statement now let us clear it in mathematical way the condition says that when you transform the set of coordinates qk to the set of cartesian coordinates 
in that condition the jacobian determinant j which will uh, which i will define now if this jacobian determinant does not vanish is is not zero at any point in that condition the transformation will be valid if it is zero the transformation will be not valid and the, the, the coordinates used in those transformation equations will be not the convenient set of generalized coordinates as to in mathematical manner what i have told you now let us write it jacobian determinant symbolically it is denoted by j of symbolically it is defined as J of Q1 Q2 so on Qf over this is not division but this is just a symbol this is a manner of writing the Jacobian determinant x1 y1 so on zn and equivalently it is written as del q1 q2 so on qf over del x1 y1 so on zn and this determinant is defined as this equal to del q1 del x1 del q2 del x2 so on del qf sorry here there will be x1 not x2 del qf del x1 and del q1 del x2 del q2 del x2 so on del qf del x2 and in similar manner we will write the other ter terms and lastly we will write del q1 del zn del q2 del zn and so on del qf del 
Zn and this determinant should not be equal to 0. This is the necessary and sufficient condition for the valid transformation. If this condition will fail, the equation 1 which defines the transformation equation will not define a consistent set of generalized coordinates. I write it for your convenience. In this condition, in this condition, not in this condition, but uh, write it as if this condition. If this condition fails, fails to hold equation 1, which was transformation equation, do not define do not define a consistent consistent set of set of generalized coordinates generalized coordinates set of generalized coordinates but if the if the jacobian determinant if the jacobian determinant if the Jacobian determinant does not does not vanish does not vanish it means it is not zero as mentioned in the above equation does not vanish then then the coordinates then the then the coordinates then the coordinates qk are as effective as effective as the Cartesian coordinates as the Cartesian coordinates as the Cartesian coordinates in describing in describing the kinematical
मोशन ऑफ द सिस्टम मोशन ऑफ द सिस्टम एंड आर मोस्ट कॉन्वेनियंट टू यूज मोस्ट कॉन्वेनियंट टू यूज मोस्ट कॉन्वेनियंट टू यूज तो एज यू वी सी हेयर दैट द फॉर द वैलिडिटी ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन द जैकोबियन डिटर्मिनाट ऑफ द अवर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इक्वेशन मस्ट नॉट वैलिड दिस मस्ट नॉट बी इक्वल टू जीरो इफ दिस विल बी जीरो इन दैट कंडीशन द सेट ऑफ कॉर्डिनेट्स यूज इन द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इक्वेशन will be not a proper set of generalized coordinates now i hope your concept of generalized coordinates have been cleared and uh, there will be some important examples of generalized coordinates which we will discuss when the problem will come and in next chap uh, lecture i will discuss some important generalized notations like generalized displacement generalized velocity generalized momentum and it is and that will be the a foundation stone to develop develop the lagrange equation of motion so uh, this is all about uh, generalized coordinates and we will meet in another lecture but i always suggest you whenever you watch a lecture definitely go to the lecture which was taught you which was given you before that lecture so our concept is always linked and this linking uh, will be help you whenever you will be acquainted to the previous lecture